Uganda's push for a proven communications industry is linked to the possibility of effectively supporting the country's economic growth by an extra 10% to the gross domestic product. According to the industry regulator, Uganda Communications Commission, the telecom sector coverage, a key element to communication, is currently at 90% coverage, essentially targeting effective services in finance, tourism, arts, and the like. We are renewing the license of MTN and moving Airtel from being just a seller operator to a national telecom operator, and now also like a tangerine and UTCL. They have an obligation in their license that they must extend their, connect, their coverage to 90% of the geographical coverage. The recent boat accident, these are the very reasons why we're insisting there should be coverage on the lake. So that, because you won't have emergency communication if there's no coverage. When we talk about the parks, we're not talking about animals being given smartphones. But the experience you have when you see that lion walk across in front of you, if you don't freeze and forget you have a phone, you will want to describe that experience at that time. Now for a country like us that is saying we want to boast and, and, and celebrate and actually reap from the tourism beauty that we have, at the start of this month, among the many ICT infrastructure developments that were confirmed by the ICT ministry, major parts of the country had been connected to the national backbone infrastructure and the slash on the price of internet bandwidth for MDAs, reforms that the communications ministry expects to make impact. The national backbone now extends to all regions of the country, spanning 4,300 kilometers, extending connectivity, for around 1,466 government offices. So over time, we have expanded the reach of this national backbone infrastructure, got many more government offices hooked on the NBI, and also lowered the cost of the internet, and this has resulted in efficiency in the government service delivery. Sections of IT-based service users and consumers weigh in quite differently in regard to the local internet and communication cost, which ranks otherwise as compared to regional states such as Tanzania and Kenya, despite likeliness of change following the slash from 70 US dollars to 30 dollars per megabyte per second for government MDAs. But when it comes to costs, I think there are other innovative business models that have come into the picture. Uh, known as pay later or pay now pay later. I think you heard someone said is from pay later. So we mainly call them higher purchases. So there are entities, for example, like MCOPAs, MCOPA that are issuing mobile phone devices on a higher purchase. Say so farmer can actually pay on a seasonal basis. So they pay a small amount of money, let me say 50,000 to start with, and they are structured to pay back the loan of that mobile phone for over 12 months. So there are flexible payment plans that are actually enabling access to these uh, mobile phones. So for me, I think that's a very innovative um, app called Nitayu. It's responsible for providing internet services to government. So it has been deliberate just uh, last week. The executive director announced a reduction in prices. But this is for government, but we believe to have a cascading if, uh, effect to the private sector. Mm -hmm. So we believe um, there will be benefits and people will probably will tell whether they are comfortable with the new prices. While regulation of the industry is widely threatening, highlighting issues such as over-the-top tax in telecoms, the contested 2% charge on gross revenue of licensed media houses, UCC's Director of Corporate Affairs, Fredo Tunu, observes oversight over the industry as simply outward and inspired by national development plans. Lastly, Whatever we do as a regulator is not inward looking. It is outward looking. In other words, our regulation is connected to the wider economy of Uganda. We contribute to the NDP3 
all the NDPs, especially two and three, we have a role in the achievement of national development plan. Our regulation has contributed to the transformation of other sectors like education, health, tourism, defense, and so forth. Government is partnership with Chinese company Engo Holdings is positioned to support production of ICT gadgets meant to effect substantial use and reliance of ICT infrastructure as the country leans towards digitalization. Ivan Tibenkana, Smart24 TV, Business Today.